Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. So in this video, we're going to look into electromagnetic induction. So in chapter 20, we learned that a motor transfer energy by an electric current into mechanical energy movement. So in this chapter, we're trying to reverse the process by using something called a generator. So it reverses the process by converting mechanical energy, for instance, water flow here into electrical energy. So there are different types of generator here. Um, dynamo, sometimes installed in a bicycle because it when your tire moves, it generates electricity that lights up your light. And the power station generator, it can be a nuclear fuel generator or a hydroelectric dam generator. So how these generators work is that they usually have something called a turbine. And they these turbines are made to move and rotate and create movement by the high pressure steam from the boiler. So in this case, if you are looking at a power station generator, the, they'll boil the water and the steam from it will help to turn this generator. And then inside this generator, they usually put something like a magnet, all right, a magnet inside, which provides a magnetic field. And when, electric, when this movement and magnetic field combine together, they create electricity. And then electricity will then be transferred from the power station to the consumers. And we'll talk about how electricity is induced in later part of the video, but just know that this is how it works for now. And all these generators, regardless of which type of generators, they have something in common, three things. Firstly, they need magnets to provide the magnetic field. They also need a coil of wire so that um, the current can be induced in this wire. And also, most importantly, movement, usually provided by steam if you are in a, hydro in a hydroelectric dam or in a bicycle where the tire move. So, Let's look into the formal definition of electromagnetic induction. It is the process of generating electricity from motion, the reverse effect of what we learned in chapter 20. So to show you, an you can illustrate electromagnetic induction um, in the science lab using this experiment. So basically how it works is that you prepare a coil of wire connected to an ammeter, and then you insert the magnet into this coil of wire. And you will see that the electricity is induced as shown by the deflection of the emitter needle. So when you insert and remove the magnet from the coil, current is induced. And the faster the movement of the magnet, the larger the induced current. And the greater the number of turns of wire you use here, again, the larger the induced current, very similar to what we learned in chapter 20. And when you reverse the pull of the magnet, you are going to see that um, the current will now flow in opposite direction hold the magnet stationary and then no current will flow. I'll put a link in the description to let you see how this works in, in a real life. I can't really show it now. But then again, similarly to what we similar to what we learned in generator, if you want a bigger effect, you can use stronger magnet and you can move the magnet into the coil or you can move the coil um, faster. So I mean create quicker relative movement. You could also use a core with more wire so that current can be induced. So um, here I have purposely put up a slide to help you understand uh, how does this thing work, right? Why is it that movement plus magnet creates electricity? And why does it have to be a coil of wire? Why can't it be plastic? And what happens here is that as the wire is moved down the pole, um, it, there's, when there's movement, it cuts through the magnetic fuel line generated by the magnets. So what happened here is that when the magnetic field line is cut, it sort of triggers some of the electrons, electrons within the wire to move. And when the electrons move, there is a current. So this is the general idea on how electricity is generated. Basically, the magnetic field line is cut by a conductor, and then electrons in the conductor are forced to move. And when there's movement of electrons, there is a current flow. So to understand electromagnetic induction, this is um, another illustration. If your magnet is stationary, no current EMF is induced. And when you put close by to the coil of wire, you're going to have a smaller EMF, let's say 2 volt. But if you were to move in very quickly in and out of the um, coil of wire, you're going to get high voltage. And in order to create a bigger, um, create a, induce a bigger EMF, you can use more coil of wire because remember, um, how it works is that electrons in the wire will move. So if you have more wire, means more electrons is flowing, which creates more current. So um, 
In chapter 20, we learn about flaming left-hand rule, which helps us to identify um, the direction of force generated. But then in this chapter, we have something called a flaming right-hand rule, means it helps us to identify which the direction of the induced current. So just remember to use the right hand um, depending on the type of question you are doing. If you're doing a force question, an electromagnetic force question, then you use the left hand. Whereas if you're doing, you, are, you want to find out the direction of the induced current, you will use the right hand instead. So let's look into AC generator, which uses the concept of electromagnetic induction. So how it works is that the axis is made to turn so that the core is spinned. So in other words, we create movement. It's either by hand or it's either by the water flow. And then the core is then connected to the circuit beyond. And generator use slip ring and it rotates. Slip ring is over here and it rotates with the core. So, and the brushes rub against the slip ring. So have the same EMF as the side of the coin. So what happens here is that when you move, when you produce movement in this case, and then with the magnetic field, in other words, you generate an alternating current. And I believe it's very hard for me to explain this concept in a 2D image. Therefore, I would recommend you to watch the video in the description below. I think this guy did a fabulous job in explaining how um, an NC AC generator works. But just to let you know that this is the same concept. We have magnet, we have movement, and it creates electricity. So um, this is also how the alternating current generated. In one way, it gener it's generated um, positive voltage, the other way negative. So that's because the movement of the co core is now different. Again, I don't think I did a good job in explaining this concept. Therefore, I would recommend you to watch the video on alternating current as link downstairs. So there are four ways to increase the voltage generated by an AC generator. Firstly, you can turn the coil more rapidly, use a coil with more turns of wire. I think we have heard of this many times. Use the coil with a bigger area and use a stronger magnet. So that's how you can make the AC current, AC generator generates more current. Let's look into another law called the Lenz law. It's also a basic law of electromagnetism that states that an induced current in a conductor will always flow in the direction as to oppose the change in magnetic field that produces it. It's very hard to understand with the definition, so I'm going to explain it step by step. So how it works is that um, if you were to put in a magnet into a coil of wire, all right, and let's say you insert the north pole into the coil of wire, what happens here is that the field always pushes back against the field that is inducing the current. Meaning, if you were to insert the magnet in facing the north pole, that you will induce a polarity similar to the one that you are inserting into. And when the magnet north pole is pushed towards the coil, the current flow to produce a north pole in this direction. All right, bear with me. And since the two north pole repel each other, it means that you have to push the magnet towards the coil and you have to do work. And what's so significant is that the work that you apply to do work will then be converted into electricity. And that's how electromagnetic magnetism work. The energy used is transferred to the current. So by knowing Lenz, how Lenz law work, you can identify what is the direction which the current is flowing in. Because if you were to insert your magnet facing north pole into the core, you automatically you know that this part of the um, core will be north pole. And by using right hand grip rule you can then point towards the right pole and then figure out that the flow, the direction of the current generated. So that's basically what Lancelot is trying to tell us is that you are able to identify the direction of the induced current generated. And if you reverse the magnetic pole, you're going to get the di direction of the current reverse instead. So that's basically it for, for Lancelot. And let's look into the next sub chapter, power lines and transformer, which is also how we get our electricity today. So how it works is that um, in the power station, we know that um, it can be a nuclear fuel station, hydroelectric, whatever it is, um, they will generate electricity and then transmit it via the national transmission lines. And to avoid dangers to people, normal people like us, they are usually carried in cables called power lines. And lines of pylon carry wire across the countryside heading for the urban and industrial power that needs the power. 
And when the power line approached the area where the power is to be used, they enter a local distribution center in which at this point here, the voltage will be reduced to a less hazardous level. So that it's less, um, not so dangerous. And in the substation, the voltage is reduced to local supply voltage, which is around 230. And then this electricity will be carried to our house. And that's how we get electricity um, to us. And regarding this, a very important invention has been made that allows this to happen, which is called the transformer. It is a device that used to increase and decrease the voltage of electrical supply. We'll talk about why is it important to increase the voltage in a while. But then um, just to let you know, there are two types of different transformer. First one is called step up transformer, which is used to step up the voltage generated. And the other one is step down transformer. So let's look into how it works. So a transformer looks like that. It has primary coil and then secondary coil. Basically, they are coil of wire and then followed by an iron coil, iron coil which links the two wire. So for a step up transformer, as implied by its name, it increases the voltage. And how it does that is that it's by having more coils in the secondary coil than the primary, as you can see here. Whereas a step down transformer, it has more coil on the primary coil than in the secondary coil. And its purpose is to decrease the voltage. So in order to understand how um, the voltage is affected by the number of coil you have, we have this formula here, equation relating voltages and number of turns in each coil. And let's solve some question to better understand this topic. Um, we have a transformer here. The primary coil has 800 turns, 25K volt, 16,000 turns, um, unknown volt. State what type of transformer is this? Now from this diagram, we can see that secondary coil has more turns than primary. So A will be a step up transformer. It increases the voltage. And in order to find out what is the voltage here, I can use the formula V, P, P stands for primary, Vs equal to NP and S. S N stands for secondary. So my voltage P primary voltage is 25,000. And number of voltage 2 secondary is not, not something I know. And primary number of turns and primary is 816,000. So if I were to put everything into the equation and find out what's the unknown Vs, I will have gotten um, 500 volt. 1000 volt and you can see that as compared to 20,000 the voltage has been increased so it is a step up transformer so how a transformer work a primary coil has alternating current so here flowing through it direct current doesn't work on transformer so because there is an alternating current current flowing in two direction and and it the current the magnetic field will keep changing and the core transport this alternating field from primary coil to the secondary coil. And our secondary coil is also in a changing magnetic field. And then the current is then induced in the core. So um, that's how transformer work. Whereas if one notes here is that if you were to supply this transformer with direct current, current that flows in one direction, this transformer will not work. So let's look into some of the new formulas that you need to learn for this chapter. Um, in the previous chapter, we learned about P equal to VI. Um, now we learn another energy loss formula, P equal to I square resistance. R stands for resistance. So let's solve some questions here. So the first question, um, they ask us to find the power loss. And we know that we can find the power loss using this formula. And what we are given is first the power, 20,000. Voltage, 5,000, 20 ohm the resistance and because we are using this formula we need to first find out what is the current of this answer so in order to find a current i'm going to use the equation p equal to vi and p equal to twenty thousand, and volt equal to five thousand and i we know that if you were to solve the question you get four four ampere so now i can do four power of two multiply by 20 which is my resistance so you got 16 times 20, which is 220 watt. So that's the power loss um, of the cable if you are using um, 
this circuit here. So what happened, they ask, effect of using a transformer to increase the output voltage to 20,000 volt instead, assuming the power output remained the same. So let's try to calculate it. So B, if let's say at my power, my voltage is now equal to 20,000 instead of 5,000, I'm going to do 20,000, P equal to VI, 20,000 is my power, and 20,000 is my voltage. And my I will now be equal to 1 ampere, and if I were to calculate the power loss, I'll get 1 pi over 2 multiplied by 20, which will be equal to 20 watts. So um, you can see that before and after of using a transformer, before we use the transformer, our power loss is 320 watt. And after we use the transformer, it's 20 watts. So in other words, we have reduced power loss by 300 watts just by using a transformer. So if we look at um, the question here, yeah, so that's the answer. And for transformer, it is usually 100% efficient, no power is lost, and well-designed transformer like that weighs only about 0.1%. So this allows us to write another formula, VI equal to VI, meaning the voltage times current here, the power here, will be equal to the power here because there is very little power loss. And this allows us to solve many other questions too. So let's look into the work example. VI equal to VI. So we have the input, main supply, 230 volt, and unknown ampere current. So whereas the output, 9 volt, and then the output current is 3 watt. So in order to solve the unknown, the current input, we can just use the VI equal to VI formula, 230I equal to 9 times 3. So which will give us 27 divided by 230. And if you were to subs everything into the formulas, you'll get 0.12 ampere. So that's how we use the formula here to solve this question. And that's all about this chapter. We have learned about you know, the various topic here. And I hope you learn a lot about electromagnetic induction. And that's also the end of our Electric City series. Let me know if you have any feedback and also any questions regarding this topic and I'll be happy, happy to help. And thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.